Hello, everybody, and welcome to Quest for Creative, episode 20. I have done a few things since the last episode, since, well, basically, I'm not going anywhere for a little while because I'm under medication that specifically states, do not operate heavy machinery while under this medication. Yeah, um, I'm still in pain. Uh, I haven't taken any painkiller yet, uh, I'm due for one, but I'm not taking one because I want to be a little bit more lucid for the video. Even though yesterday's episode actually turned out pretty good, uh, in my personal opinion. Um, so I've done a few things. Like, first off, you can see that the essence berry bushes have been moved from their rooftop position. That way I can attach them to the uh, uh, Project Red Pipe system. Um Yes, like I said, it only shows the 64 that are in there, but I figured may as well throw it in there. That way we can keep a running tab of how many infinite items we have. Um, this one's not easy to see, but I added a vacuum hopper to uh, where I'm doing the row and leaves. Granted, that doesn't really matter because this thing's been turned off for a while now. Uh, this way, those row and berries that I say probably shouldn't count do count because they'll fall. They just won't be picked up. So like the uh, harvester over here on the other side uh, won't pick up, won't get uh, rowan berries from the rowan leaves, but the rowan berries will fall without a problem. So now they'll fall and they'll get sucked in with the vacuum hopper. And then we'll have infinite rowan berries. Another thing that's missing was right here, but it's straight up missing. And that was the chunk loader. Um, I logged in this morning, like early, early this morning, and everything seems to be fine, and it was working, by the way. Um, I had more stuff than I did. For example, I did have extra pink slime. Uh, when I had logged off, I had, uh, like 600 some odd pink slime. When I logged back in, I had like 6,000 some odd pink slime. Um, and yeah, we can actually see we're going into the next tank. Uh, this one's actually filling up. Yeah, it's filled up the bottom tank here and is going into the next tank as well. So we get a whole bunch of meat, liquid meat compared to pink, pink slime. Anyways, uh, but, uh, so I logged in. Everything seemed to be working fine. Uh, I logged off a little while later and log, went to log back in. Server wasn't responding. Checked the server. It had crashed. And it had actually dropped an error log this time, a crash log. And it was the chunk loader that crashed the server. Uh, so I turned, to, I restarted the server and uh, let it run for a little while. Logged off a little while later, went to log back in. It had crashed again. Same exact error message. So yes, the chunk loader does crash the server. However, uh, one of my commenters, Mr. Z Ker 4 Fter, was nice enough to inform me that the liquid holding area inside the uh, chunk loader, whoops, I popped something, was uh, is for mob essence. Uh, li uh, liquid mob essence? No, I don't want you. I want the triceratops, damn it. <sighs> the one thing that I really don't like about the, I mean, I like the uh, dinosaurs here, and I like the bones and stuff, but they tend to take up space. A lot more space than they should, really. There we go. Come on, turn around. Come on, face me. Thank you. Okay. Um, do you like the Triceratops? I try to put a block into this little hole there. All I see is Triceratops. That's it. I'm not looking at the Triceratops, but that's all I see. It's kind of annoying. But anyways, yeah. Uh, so the chunk loader takes mob essence. Though it was working. So I... I, I Again, I don't fully understand the chunk loader. Um, and it did max out. I did max out the power of the chunk loader, where it was the 2.1 billion RF. There was still no red bar indicating that there was there was internal storage for power. So, again, don't understand the chunk loader. But I'm not going to be using it because it crashes my server. And I don't like that idea, so I'm going to avoid that. Uh, what I am going to do that I haven't done quite yet is do the other idea. And that's just use a whole crap ton of poppet shelves. Just haven't gotten around to doing that yet. 
Um, over here, we can see that there was a bit of a change here. I have added a farm. And this is one of those things that I didn't want to make an entire episode out of because, well, I mean, we've gone over this a thousand times already. It's the same exact thing as the tree farms over there. It's just I'm using uh, carrots, potatoes, and wheat instead of trees. A everything else is exactly the same except we're using silver upgrades instead of lapis upgrades because the lapis upgrades only increase by one, whereas the silver upgrades increase by um, six, which gives me 15 by 15 or just inside of a chunk, at least as just inside of a chunk as I can find or as I can get because we have one block here and we have one block here, but it works. Um, I really have no particular reason to keep it inside of a chunk, but that's that's how my mind is working right now, so that's what I'm going with. Uh, but I've added it to the, uh, the, the lockers. So we're getting carrots, potatoes, wheat, uh, poison potatoes, and I already have a locker over there for seeds. Uh, so we have all of that. So now we have on our updated system. So let's see. That would be 77. 8, 9, 10, so that makes it 110, so this makes it 112. 112 items we have infinitely in our lockers. For 20 episodes, that's pretty damn good. Uh, and today, we are going to be adding 16 more, and it should be quite obvious what I'm heading for with this setup here. These, The Technicolor Sheep Farm, I know, Technicolor Farm, I've already taken the name for, but guess what? The Technicolor Sheep Farm is an older name. It's been around since I was doing... What was that server called? Endomon? Oh, a long time ago. One of my very first servers that I ever actually was in. But I'm just going to wait to sleep. But basically what we're going to do... What's, go what's happening is... Um, as you all know, I have infinite cotton. And it's really nice. Except for the fact that if I want a stack of wool... I have to take nine stacks of cotton. And if I need a whole bunch of stacks of wool, that clears out the cotton locker really, really fast. So what I'm going to do is take care of that problem real quick. And it's going to be really easy, actually. A little complicated, but it's going to be easy. And we are going to do that with another Mind Factory Reloaded uh, piece of equipment called the Rancher. Now, there's a reason I have four of these. And, plop, this is the reason. Where is my precision sledgehammer? Okay, now, y'all know with the precision ha sledgehammer, you can see where the Mind Factory Reloaded Machines have effect. Their AOE, if you wish to call it that. So we can see that this covers an area 5x5, five five, okay? Now, if we look into the rancher, there's no upgrade. There's no upgrade slot, so I have to do it in a 5x5 five five spot. But I feel bad leaving the sheep in a 5x5 five five slot. I know they're digital. I know they don't really care. I know they're making the sheep centipede over there, for Christ's sakes. Um, so it doesn't really matter. But that's just me. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to put four down. Do I have that? Yes. I, uh, yeah, I've got that lined up, right? I'm just making sure I have these all lined up right. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, and then the next one should be there, and then there, right? Bullseye. Oh, that feels, that just looks weird, but it's because it's 3D. Uh, if I'm on this side, it looks like that side's smaller, and if I look, I'm on this side, it looks like that side's smaller, but it's because it's 3D and it's perspective. Yeah, it's the perspective shifting that's screwing with my head. Um... But yeah, so that will work. And then what I'm going to do is just set the ranchers up in an enclosed area. Um, uh, let's see. I'm going to enclose this area. We'll just enclose it with some smooth stone. Smooth stone I have a lot of, and it's easy to get. Uh, so I'm just going to enclose the ranchers with smooth stone, transplant all the sheep into there, and Bob's your uncle. We're done. Now, the reason I'm using smooth stone is the same exact reason I used the uh, the bricks here for the cow farm. 
And that's because if you use fence, while it does look better, it actually uh, breaks things. And I'll show you over here with the chickens, because I have the chickens over here enclosed in a fence. All right, and you see that guy with the red hat? He's in the corner there. Let's grab some seeds real quick. Now, if I have these seeds, we see how that one follows me around. But we see how that one in the corner doesn't. That's because the, the animals will actually get stuck in the corners and they can't get out of it. Uh, so that could affect our shearing. That could affect a lot of things. So for the farm purposes, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to use smooth stone. And then what I'm going to do is put smooth stone the entire way around the colored areas. So these areas right here. So we are going to put a corner there. And then another corner there. And one there. And one there. All right. And then the sheep will be able to live inside of that area there. So all I have to do is just finish closing this off. Gonna have to worry about lighting the area back up, but oh well. And for the most part, I mean, that's pretty much it. Um, ooh. While I'm doing this, um, the commenter that I pointed out before, the Mr. Z Kerr for Fter, I know it's supposed to be like Mr. Z Crafter uh, with a four for an A. It's like uh elite speak or whatever the hell that's called whatever the children are calling it these days i have no idea um we didn't talk like that when i was leet <laughs> we didn't say leet when i was leet so yeah uh but yeah i i just couldn't help making fun of him so sorry about that all right so now we have all of this and we have the area enclosed in just fine so the next thing I have to do is get the system power. Now I have plenty of redstone energy conduits here. And I'm just going to switch into my bat form real quick. Come on, there we go. And then I'm just gonna dig my way around. And this will be the path that I put the redstone conduit. So really, really easy to do the wiring. Oh, what the hell? I must have been hitting shift at some point. <laughs> I lost the cabling. All right, so let's start here and work our way backwards. Why? So I can get my butt out of here when we're done. So, yeah. Uh, let's see, anything else interesting? Uh, let's see. MZ Crafter would like to see a vlog. I'm thinking about it. I am heavily thinking about it. I haven't decided quite yet, but I am thinking about it. Just going to have to give me a little bit of time thinking about that one. Um, and Space Gator suggested that everything, like all of the ores from the drill over there, should be processed before they go into the lockers of infinity and i agree wholeheartedly um and i do want to do that but it's it would take so many pulverizers and uh redstone furnaces to get that to work properly 256 yes okay so i'm just using a tesseract here to power the entire system because since i'm not using the chunk loader over there anymore i have this guy which is outputting 20,000 RF per tick with absolutely nothing to do with it. It's like, I got nothing else going for it. So yeah, we're just going to be using that from now on. Uh, let's see. Then we'll get some impulse item ducks, and they will go around the outside of the system, which I'm going to have to disable that real quick. Though I don't think it matters because that Tesseract's not set up to do anything. But oh well. And then I'll just set it up to go around one side instead of going the entire way around because there really is no point in going the entire way around. 
I'm missing any? No, I'm not missing any. All right. And then... There we go. <laughs> Connect it right to the chest. All righty. And if we flip these around real quick. I'm mildly curious. I don't know. I haven't played with a rancher. I can guess to the, the answer to the question, but I'm not 100% sure. But I'm wondering if I have to put the pneumatic, the pneumatic servos into here. Because the rancher won't store things in its inventory, like the autonomous activators, for example. It will spit them out the back automatically. So I'm mildly curious if the rancher will just shear things and then uh, spit it out itself. So we can find out real quick by picking up a sheep at random, plunking it down. It will get sheared. At least it should get sheared. There we go. All right. I don't know what sheared it. I think this one did. Or not. I'm not seeing anything go down the item ducts. Hmm. Did I miss it? Yes, I missed it. Okay, we do not have to put pneumatic servos in when connecting to the back of the ranchers. All right, well, that'll save me a little bit of resources. And then from here, all we have to do is just migrate everything over to uh, the, uh, yeah, to their new home. And hopefully these guys won't glitch out and end up all over the place like uh, they did on the community mod server. I had a similar setup to this, and I just kept losing sheep over and over and over again. It was driving me nuts. Um... But I never really got that far, so I wasn't able to do anything, like, overly cool with them. I didn't get this idea for the whole quest for creative thing until... Well, actually, until a couple of weeks ago. Uh, like, two days before I started this series is when I got the idea. Um, I got the idea, and I went, that is a really good idea. I should do that. You know what? I'm going to do that. And I did. So, yeah. Woo. Well, that was a relatively easy little trip then, huh? That was actually significantly easier than I thought it would be. Um, and I'm only 18 minutes into this episode. I'd feel bad ending it now. I'm not 100% sure what to do. So, you know what? I'm going to cut off here. I'm going to finish moving the sheep over, then I'm going to set up the lockers um, for all the wool that's going to come up, connect it to the system, and think of something else to do so I don't feel like I'm ripping you guys off. Uh, so I shall be right back. And I'm back, and I'm sorry, I couldn't think of anything else to do in this episode. I do feel like I'm slightly cheating you guys out of a full episode, but uh, my brain's not working at 100%, and my face is starting to really hurt, so I need some painkillers. So I'm going to have to cut this episode short, sorry about that. But I got it working. Um, I mean, well, af at, after this long, it's kind of easy to get this stuff working. I mean, I've done it how many times already? Holy crap. Um, so basically, I just set up 16 lockers and have the Project Red Pipes with the uh, responder chips set to whitelist. And each one is set to whitelist a different color wool. And then I've got the broadcaster chips in there so we can keep track of what's going on over at our interface. And we can see all our wool. And uh, it's going faster than I expected, actually. Um, I guess we'll see what happens, uh, well, in the next episode. Not sure when that would be. But current updated count, we can see we have seven rows here. Another four rows here. That makes 11. So that's 121. 122, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 128. 128 items in the infinity lockers. I love it. <laughs> we are doing amazing, amazing things here. Oh, I love it. I love it so much. Um, I do want to clarify one thing. Um, 
and this was the thing that Space said, Space Gator. He said about having the ores being processed before they go into the lockers of Infinity. And I said I agree with him, but I couldn't figure out why. Uh, I want to elaborate on that a little bit. Uh, my original thought was to have all of the, you know, once the ores came out of the drill, they went and they were processed into blocks. So the gold would be processed into gold dust and then gold bars, well, ingots, and then gold blocks. And then they would go into the infinity lockers. Uh, but I couldn't figure out how to do that without having an individual uh, pulverizer, furnace, and crafting table for each and every thing. Um, and even if you double up, like if you have two ores going into one pulverizer, or even three ores going into one pulverizer, and then into one furnace, you still have the problem where you have to have an individual crafting table for every single ore to make the blocks. Uh, and that's why I don't have that set up right now. I could do it. It'd be a little bit expensive. It'd be a little bit complicated. But I could do it. Uh, but it's because I'd have to have all of those liquid crafters. Uh, I mean, I have, what, 25 items here? Yeah, 25 items. I would have to have 25 separate liquid crafters. Guaranteed. All of them running with a redstone timer. And I really did not want to do that. That's overly complicated for what we're trying to do. That's where the Project Red uh, crafting pipes came in. And they would be a perfect, perfect solution. It's just completely on demand. If you need it, you just type it in. It makes it itself. Sends it out what you need. And it'd be perfect. But as you know, as we found out, as I found out the hard way, uh, the crafting pipes crash the game. So yeah. So for right now, I'm just gonna leave them in their raw form, and I'm just gonna, I'll just grab them and manually do it as I need them for right now until I can figure out a better way than having a whole crap ton of crafting pipes. Or uh, liquid crafters, I mean, not crafting pipes, liquid crafters. And uh, I know technically if I wanted to, even if I did use the Project Red, if I wanted them to be crafted into blocks, I would still have to use a whole bunch of liquid crafters. But yeah, no, I'm, I'm just going to, I'm going to avoid that altogether. If I was going to use the crafting pipes, uh, I would just use... You know, just output the bars or just the, uh, like, uh, a single diamond or a single emerald, for example. I wouldn't bother with putting them into blocks. Uh, I wouldn't need to because then I have to take them from blocks and turn them into something, you know, turn them into their base form before I can do anything with them. So, uh, anyways, okay, so you can see all of these poppet shelves. I took the time and I put poppet shelves up all through the chunks. So if we hit F9, we can see our chunk borders here. So this chunk, that chunk, that chunk, and that chunk are covered. And then we go over to the next set. They are covered by those four over here. These four chunks are covered and so on and so forth. And I ended up with an area that's six chunks by eight chunks. Uh, so I've got plenty of space to build. And the biggest advantage with these poppet shelves Aside from not crashing the server and taking up absolutely ridiculous amounts of power, it's far more dynamic. Uh, I can make uh, any width I want, any height I want. I can shrink. I can grow. Um, yeah, if I can ever find the damn things. I mean, I have some. I have twenty of them left over, so I can go in any direction I want with any chunk I want. They don't even have to be continuous. Um, so yeah, there are advantages to using the poppet shelves. Uh, plus, if I ever actually get into witchery, which I've been meaning to, i just been doing everything else. Um, I mean, I have all of these places to put the poppets. And if you have the poppets, you can basically become immortal. Uh, and I mean more immortal than I am now. I'm pretty freaking in immortal right now. Um, did I ever point this out of the video? Somebody was nice enough. I forget who it was. Uh, let's see if I can see that in my comments real quick. 
Um, do I have it anywhere? I'm just flipping through my comments to see. It was Flame Magby, another guy from the community mod server, uh, community craft server. Uh, he was nice enough to explain to me that the last stand enchantment uh, when you lose hearts, it actually starts taking your uh, enchantment levels instead of killing you, uh, which is really cool. Uh, and it's just another layer of immortality, uh, especially if I went ape and used like all of the <laughs> levels in there. Yeah, uh, I would I would be immortal on the level of Super Mario uh, in... Super Mario, wait, what's that game called? The The one for the Wii. The one where no matter how crappy you are, you can beat the game with like 150 lives. Uh, it doesn't matter how bad you are. You have that many lives. You are immortal, okay? It's just, the game was a little too easy for my tastes. I just found it way the crap too easy. Uh, now, here's something I realized that I didn't say at the beginning of the episode. Uh, what we did in the last episode, we did this cool little trick that I figured out uh, where we use uh, Treebeard here and used his ability to grow grass and the autonomous activator set to left-click mode to gather up seeds and stuff. Um, I threw them all into their own lockers and it's not fast, but I didn't expect it to be fast doesn't have to be fast because I mean it doesn't do much of anything uh, it gets 22 items and I have 20 here 16 there four there is 20 uh, because one of the items is seeds and the seeds already had a locker and the other item that we get that I didn't know we got is carrots I didn't know that but I have a locker for carrots uh, over here right here um, and I made this farm before I put those items into the locker. So I had the carrots already over here, so I just let them stay over here. Uh, better, better to not double things up because then it just kind of screws with things. Um, though the count isn't terribly accurate right now to begin with. I mean, 3k feathers, just exactly 3000 feathers. I don't think that's accurate. Uh, especially since every now and then I'll see a glitch. Um, I saw it early this morning where this didn't say 3,000 feathers. This said 13,000 feathers. That had a one in front of it, and that definitely had a one in front of it. And it confused me for a little while. Uh, but it fixed itself, so I don't know what it meant. I really don't. Hmm. All right, well, I'm going to end the episode here. As I said, my face is really starting to hurt. Uh, it doesn't help that the wisdom tooth was, well, in my jaw, and that right beside where my jaw attaches to my head, my skull, so it just talking hurts like mad. So I'm going to end it up here. I'm going to say see you guys in the next episode, and as always, keep playing the game and have fun.